Fox News alert. Tonight, we've obtained leaked documents courtesy of Chris Rufo, reportedly from inside Google, exposing the perverse racial brainwashing going on in one of America's largest and most powerful tech companies. One graphic allegedly created by Google's diversity and inclusion lead claims that expressions of, quote, socially acceptable white supremacy include things like celebrating Columbus Day, the denial of white privilege, and the phrase, make America great again. While another graphic shows conservative commentator Ben Shapiro and former President Donald Trump are only a few steps away from, quote, mass murders on the white supremacy pyramid. It is a disturbing discovery made all the more terrifying when you remember these are the people who are responsible for nearly everything you see online. Manhattan Institute senior fellow Chris Rufo is here now with more on this. Chris, this is really disturbing, um, hard to believe. And if I look at the list, like half of America then is a white supremacist. And I wonder, Chris, is that the point that you can crush your political ideological enemies and still claim the moral high ground because, you know, they're racist? That's right. I've known for years now that companies in Silicon Valley, including Google, are ideological echo chambers. And uh, this is what happened. I had documents now from about a third of the Fortune 100 companies that are promoting uh, similarly themed anti-racism programs. Uh, and uh, this in the confines of Silicon Valley is not only considered uh, not unusual, it's considered virtuous. Uh, they slander and degrade half the country and make this absurd assertion that someone like Ben Shapiro, uh, who's a, con a person of conviction, a person of character, is somehow uh, on the road to genocide. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they should retract and eliminate this program uh, immediately. So Google uh, controls virtually all information flow in our country. I mean, it's really frightening how much power they actually have. And so I'm not just concerned about free speech. I'm concerned about elections. I mean, they have control of information and what candidates say or don't get to say um, on these platforms. Yeah, I mean, the fact is, is that Google controls the information flow of the United States. Uh, everything from what you search uh, in your browser to what you see on YouTube uh, to all of the, the image and the world's library. Uh, it's an extraordinary power, extraordinarily powerful tool that could do a lot of good. But the reality is that the culture inside companies like Google matters. And when it's hijacked by, uh, by racial <laughs> ideologues, it can do tremendous damage, not only to Google's uh, users and consumers, but actually uh, to American society. We have to know what's happening in these companies, inside these uh, monopolies. Uh, and we have to make sure that it's what's in, in the best interest of a company like Google aligns with the interests of, of the country, the United States. Yes. Uh, and when we see these documents, when it's exposed, uh, it should draw serious concerns, not only from the people, uh, but from policymakers in D.C. Yeah, but what about from all of us? And I agree with you 100 percent. I mean, our government needs to do something about it, our Congress. Um, but in addition, what can we personally do? I know my husband, he's really big on saying, I'm not going to support these people that want to crush conservatives. So he doesn't use Google. He makes a point of always going to duck, 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 go, or he uses Rumble. How important is it for conservatives to make those, you know, very deliberate decisions to change where they're getting their, what platforms they're using, how they're getting their information, and then hopefully also crush create more uh, platforms uh, and, and, and technology that isn't going to, uh, you know, crush conservatives. I think it's important, but I think ultimately it will prove to be insufficient. The reality is that there are monopoly conditions across many yeah. different verticals uh, in the tech world. And uh, this is a really a public policy problem. When you have monopoly conditions, even if you're a stringent libertarian, it justifies some intervention, some regulation. Uh, I think a lot of these tech companies should be regulated as common carriers. Uh, like, you know, you can't deny someone the phone service from AT&T because of their political views. It should be the same for something like Google. Uh, and what we see inside these companies is that increasingly the ideology of Google employees is actively hostile to the United States. In other documents, they say, uh, and, and other training programs, they said that the United States is a system of white supremacy and that everyone in this country is, quote, raised to be racist. Uh, this is a deeply false and damaging kind of th thinking. Uh, it should have nowhere in America's biggest and most powerful companies. I think you're right. It, it needs to be handled by Congress. You're so right. Uh, Chris, thank you for breaking that with, with us tonight. Appreciate it.